Hi, Cancer. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for April of 2021. If you run your own business, this month is a really great time to launch something. There is a lot of energy gathering in your 10th house of career and then also shifting into your 11th house, which governs social media marketing. A mission orders reading can help you to get on top of your game. You can find a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, Jupiter is moving along through Aquarius this year, and that would be your eighth house of intimate connections and sharing. Let's take a look. So here's Jupiter in your eighth house. Jupiter brings luck and opportunity, growth and expansion wherever it goes. Uh, and this is the house where you trust others and others trust you. So you could grow in trust this year, which is an interesting thought because it also applies financially too. So um, it could be a really good year, for example, for, <coughs> for borrowing money <coughs> on terms that really work for you. So that's an interesting thought. Now, if you have late cancer rising, then uh, Jupiter might actually be in your seventh house, which would be terrific because that is a relationship luck year, a really good time for dating or for having a renaissance with the partner that you already have. Um, you can find out more about Jupiter in Aquarius in the video that we made about that on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology in the 2021 news playlist. Now, Julia, I think you've got some stuff in mind for the Cancers of the world about Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, Cancer, I'll start with Mercury. That's the planet of communication, and it also shows us where our mental activity is going to be for the month. So at the very beginning, on April 3rd, Mercury is going to jump into your 10th house. This is the house of career. Um, so if you do anything Mercury-related in your career, that might mean writing, um, speaking, teaching, buying, selling, or being an agent of sorts, then this can definitely be a very productive time period. Um, but generally speaking, for everybody, your mind is going to be very preoccupied with where you're going in career, where you'd like to go next. If you don't have a current job right now, then this is a wonderful transit to work on that resume and really start thinking ahead. Then on April 19th, Mercury is going to jump into your 11th house of friends and um, groups that you're a part of. That can include teams, recovery programs, societies, and clubs. Um, so that means that the, the, the tempo is going to pick up a bit on your social life, and you're going to be doing your best thinking with in a group context. So maybe if you have some idea, you're going to want to just kind of run it by your friends and sort of get their feedback, which can be really helpful. Then Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, begins the month also in your 10th house of career. Uh, the 10th house is also the house of authority figures as well. So that includes whoever you consider an authority figure in your life, whether that's a parent, a teacher, a boss. If you run your own business, maybe you're having to deal with the government or other institutions who are being the authority figure. But any, any Anyway, Venus brings harmony wherever she goes. So this is a really, really wonderful time for, for being able to, um, you know, gloss over or not gloss over, smooth and over any rough edges that you may have had with any authority figures in your life and really gaining their favor. Then on April 14th, Venus is going to also move into your 11th house of friends. Um, so really wonderful time period just for connecting with people that you just feel close to you through friendship and also any groups that you're a part of too. It's also a great transit for for the single cancers out there um, to meet new people on things like dating apps because um, this house also rules networks too. Then Mars, the planet of action and activity, starts the month in the 12th house. This is the house of isolation. Uh, it's the house of the subconscious. So if you get really upset about things during this time, you're likely to be kind of indirect and kind of passive aggressive about it because whatever's in the 12th house tends to get a bit hidden. But then Mars on April 23rd is going to move into your first house of self. So that's going to have a totally different energy to it because if you've been keeping your anger to yourself so much in the first few weeks of the month, by April 23rd, you're going to be ready to just kind of let it out. <laughs> um, it's a great transit for being able to stand up for your boundaries, uh, assert yourself, know what your rights are, but you can also go a little bit overboard too. So just be mindful of that and it can be a constructive time. Indeed. And uh, there's, a, there's a general sort of a migration going on from uh, Aries into Taurus, which means early in the month we see this 
large grouping of planets in your 10th house of career, bringing a lot of the emphasis there, followed by later in the month, a uh, bunch, of, bunch of those planets moving over into the 11th house, which is, as Julia was saying, it's the house of groups. It's also the house of friendship and networks. And therefore, it's the house of social media and social media marketing. So, um, but let's just uh, look at the moons and see how they slot into all of this. Um, there are two moons this month, and the first one is on April 11th, and you'll see it right here, sun and moon together in Aries in your 10th house of career, bringing a lot of energy there. New moons are really great times to plant new seeds. This one being in Aries in your 10th house suggests that um, you'll have a lot of energy and a lot of drive and a lot of emotionally driven spontaneity to begin new things in your career. We're calling this moon assertive, but also relatable. Um, it's a very willful, it's a very strong-willed moon, but it has more than a dash of relatability because of the presence of Venus and the harmony with Juno. So you'll be able to, you know, start stuff with great decisiveness and probably pull some people along in your wake to help you too. That's a really nice thought. Now, as the month goes on, we have the seasonal shift when the sun moves into Taurus right here on the 19th. And this is where um, the 10th house begins to be left and the 11th house really starts to fill up. And uh, the season of Taurus is a season of flowers and great smells. It's a season of um, the things that Taurus likes, you know, the, the sensory and simple pleasures of life. And um, this falling in your 11th house says that in your communities, in your friendships, you really like stability, consistency, constancy, and, and to enjoy life together. So uh, this is the season for doing just that. On April 26th, we have the full moon in Scorpio, and you'll see the moon is slipping around the chart until it arrives right here in Scorpio, opposite to that sun. And uh, the full moon is generally a time where emotions run high. And um, quite often we'll play out a full moon in our partnership, taking either the role of the sun and facing off against the moon or the role of the moon and facing off against the sun. This particular moon, we're calling focused obsession balanced with calm objectivity. The moon itself representing obsession, it being in Scorpio, uh, a very passionate placement for the moon, uh, very tempestuous and even chaotic at times. But this moon has uh, some pretty strong help and, and harmony with Vesta and Mars, helping it to focus and channel all of that emotion. And for you, this falls in the fifth house of creativity, self-expression, performance. So um, even though with Scorpio in your fifth house, you don't really like to be visible and seen, it wouldn't be surprising if you kicked up a little bit of drama and if you chose to channel that uh, those obsessive feelings into your your creative you know process you could find some pretty intense results and that would be awesome because it would give those 11th house planets something to do something that they could put on instagram or facebook about whatever it is that you've been up to now, I want to say a few things about Pluto, which is um, uh, right here in Capricorn. And this year, Pluto is, is um, you know, getting ready in the next couple of years to finish up Capricorn. But it's about to turn retrograde. And this is something that I've been talking about for the last couple of months in your horoscopes, that the late winter and early spring is a really, really good time this year for starting big projects if you want them to proceed swiftly and without obstruction. However, that condition erodes as the year goes on, beginning with this Pluto turning retrograde, which it does on April 27th. You see right there's the little red RX symbol, which means Pluto has now gone retrograde. So at this point, projects that you begin are going to have just a little bit of, of sabotage, like self-sabotage, self-obstruction, a little bit of extra complexity that maybe they didn't need. And uh, as the months go on, all of these planets in a row are going to turn retrograde, making conditions even more and more complicated for uh, those big projects proceeding. 
So use it or lose it, <laughs> start your projects now before Pluto turns retrograde. And if you have anything in your chart that Pluto is transiting this year, you would know it because of how that feels. Pluto transits bring transformation and metamorphosis, a death and rebirth experience. When Pluto turns retrograde, if you are having a Pluto transit this year, which, which you would if you have anything in your chart at all from 24 to 26 degrees of a cardinal sign, not just your sun, like your birthday, but your moon, maybe your Venus, whatever. If it's between 24 and 26 degrees of Aries or Libra or Capricorn or Cancer, then Pluto is transiting it this year. And that arena of your life is going into sheer meltdown. And that could feel pretty intense you know, to, to think of that area of your life going through a complete and total transformation. You can find out more about a transit like that from a reading with Julia or me where we can show you a diagram that lays it out in time, lets you know when it'll be over, explains how to cope with it, and, and um, lets you to relate to it uh, through an understanding of how it feels and what it's for. And... Um, and if you want that, well, you know where to find us. You can find us online always at pandoraastrology.com, where you can get readings or take classes, where you can find the forecast, uh, where you can uh, find your horoscope too. And um, if you like this video, please do share it with your friends because we'd like to meet your friends too. And um, you can find this video and others like it on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, where we put our monthly news videos. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.